the cross. You see the problem? Christians end on the cross and the resurrection. What happened on the other day before the resurrection? What happened? You see why I'm different? I will tell you what happened from the cross. I will tell you what happened right in the grave. And I will tell you when he resurrected, what then happened next? And I will tell you when he ascended into heaven, what did he meet there? There's a lot to know. They grappled over this man. Grappled him and he threw him from himself. Spoiling principalities and power and making a show of them. And immediately, after he has spoiled principalities and power, he demanded for a key. And it was recorded in Revelation 1 and verse 18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. He says, behold, behold me, see, 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 I'm alive forevermore. I've collected the keys of hell and of death. So what did he do with the keys? That was what the key he used to open where Abraham was. Oh, you are not listening again. We are the body of Christ. The eye does its own. The ear does its own. The hand does its own. It will be a problem when the ear starts doing the work of the eye. It will be a very big problem. And that is the thing we are facing in the church today. One man wants to do the work of everybody. And they will declare every other person as fake. And they are the only original. That was Elijah one day said to God. He said, Father, please protect me because I'm the only true prophet. And God said, shut up. There are 7,000 of them that have not bowed their heads to bow. This message goes to those of them in the kingdom who believe they are the only true men of God. So when you start saying what they have not taught them, they say this man has deviated. No, I have not deviated. I have only discovered it through knowledge. And the Bible says, through knowledge shall what? The just be delivered. I have gotten knowledge and I am determined to pass this knowledge to people all over the world who cares to listen. And a young man on my comment session this morning, I spotted a young man who said, you are talking nonsense. I said, thank you very much for your comment. That is how some people see it. Some people see it as nonsense. Others see it as sense. It depends on where you are looking from. <laughs> Uh, when principality deals with you, you will know that it's sense. When principality have not touched you, it's nonsense. Praise God. Are you with me? Which this will bring me to a text in Job chapter 32 from verse 6. He says, And Alihu, the son of Barakel, the Bussite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid and does not show you my opinion. This is God's will I'll be talking here. I am young as believer, a young small pastor. All right? And those of them around the world, big, big men of God, churches, they are very old. So I'm very afraid to give them my opinion. Next verse. I don't want to show them my opinion because I was thinking. And I said, days should speak. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. Days, that is age. I thought age should speak. You know, when we are doing this thing in ministry, when you are a small man that nobody knows who you are, when you start dabbling into issues, they say, this is heresy. It's a small boy. Who did, you, who did you listen to? Who is your spiritual father? So as long as there is no trace, then you are. So that's why me too, I felt days should speak. I thought age should speak. And multitude of years, those who have been in this work for many years, I thought they should understand this thing. But there is something I want to say. Next verse. I thought multitude of years would teach wisdom. But look at this. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. He said, there is a spirit inside man. The inspiration of the Almighty it says that spirit gives man understanding. This is what has happened to me. I'm only talking the one I'm talking because I have entered a realm of understanding. Look, when you come to my level, your prayer points will change. The way you pray will change. The way you see the whole scenario. Look, I'm seeing God from another angle. Look what I'm doing. I'm watching from the mountaintop. <laughs> okay, I thought age should speak and multitude of years should teach me. But there's a spirit in man. That carries the inspiration of the Almighty. Next verse. Watch something here. It says, watch this. It says, great men are not always wise. Neither do they aged understand judgment. You are not my spiritual father because you have gray hair. <laughs> you are not my spiritual father because you have gray hair. That's why when he says, if any man seek in the church, 
let him call on the elders of the church. The elders of the church are not the gray-headed men and women. The elders of the church are those who have handled the word of God. Those who have looked into the word of life and produced something out of it. Mike Mudok said something. If you pick up a particular topic and use 60 scripture on it, you are a master of that topic. Ladies and gentlemen, I've used a thousand scripture to deal with principality issues. It's not a joke. A great man of God in the U.S. was trying to teach about the principalities. And I said, let me listen to him. A great man of God. While he was teaching, I discovered that the extent of his revelation was where I have left 10 years ago. That's I've left that side. That means if that man got to hear me, because I saw where he's trying to enter, but he couldn't access it. He got to the T-junction and stayed there. But me, I've passed there 10 years ago. You see, with what we have carried in us, a conventional ministry is not enough. So the message has to cut across churches. It, it has to cut across religions. They need to know who this God is. First and foremost, we were told that man sinned against God. And then he had a problem with God. But from my discovery, I discovered that man has no problem with God from the beginning. He only had problem with the existing constitution. And those who enforces the provisions of the constitution, we are those that chased man out of the garden. Have you asked yourself, who are those who chased man out of the garden? God killed an animal to cover them up. Just a way of protecting them immediately. But the constitution stands and then there was nothing he could do. So when the Bible talked about a mediator between the old and the new, people thought this mediator is coming to settle God and man. No! Is Jesus not God? I hate when Christians contradict themselves. Is Jesus not God? So God came to die for us to settle with him. That's wrong. He didn't come to die because he wants us to settle with him. We have no problem with him. We are only having issues with the written constitution. And what is in the constitution? Without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission for sin. There is no how God wants to paint it. So he needed to shed blood. Didn't you read it that Jesus complained twice? So if he just wanted to come and settle the problem with man, will he complain twice? He said, Lord, if this is your will, get see many. let this cup pass over me. And the Bible says, sweat came out of his face as great drops of blood. He was not ready for this. And he told the guy, say, oh Lord, Father, who was the Father? He was referring to the Holy Spirit because in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, declared Jesus. He said, the, Jesus, the woman was found by, with a child of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is the Father of Jesus. So when he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? It was that moment the Holy Spirit had to leave him. Because Jesus cannot stay in the body of... The Holy Spirit cannot stay in the body of sin. Do you now understand the fact? So he came in as a mediator between man and the legal forces who are accusing man of the crime at their father Adam committed. That was why in hell he went there for one purpose to go and deliver those who died before his arrival. He went to deliver those who died before he came. That's why when he entered hell, all hell stood looking at him. They said, this is Jesus, the one that raised the dead, the one that cast out the devil. What is he doing in hell? And then guess what? All the principality that have held the prophets of old, who tied Abraham and kept him in cell, tied Joshua, tied all of them and kept them in their various, including Lazarus that was kept in his bosom, was also tied in that cell. And Jesus, when they saw him, what did they do? They saw Jesus walking in without bowing to the principality in charge of hell. And then they jump on Jesus and try to force Jesus to bow to that principality. But something happened there. That is where the miracle power began. The Bible tells us he threw off from himself. That means there was a group of spirit grappling over Jesus, forcing him to bow to the one sitting on the throne in hell. So he threw off from himself, the Bible tells us, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show, a, an open spectacle on them. The triumphing over them. Look at this. He triumphed. When the Bible says he triumphed, that means there was a warfare. Before his death, there were people in the grave. True or false? Before his death, Ezekiel has died. True or false? That means Ezekiel was in the grave. Before he, his death, Jeremiah had died. Not so. It means Jeremiah was in the grave. Before his death, Abraham had died. Not so. Meaning they are in the grave. And the Bible tells us about 
the rich man and Lazarus. And it was said that Lazarus was kept in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man saw them in hell. And there was a great gulf. But where Abraham was, was the good side of hell. They were all waiting. Hi. They were waiting for the day of their freedom. David was also there, waiting for the day of their freedom. Because from that place where their souls were locked up, they cannot come out. Because anything that makes them to come out, they will be journeying towards one place. Where is the place? The garden Adam and Eve were chased out from. That is where they will be journeying to. But that was why they were locked up in that hell, so that they will not get there. God would have just stayed in heaven and said, man, from today I'm the God, I'm God. Your sins are forgiven. But he couldn't do that too. Something restricted him against the wishes of Jesus. Jesus was forced to die. It was said, who will go for me? That means God was actually looking for who will go for him. So Jesus was forced to die against his will. Now when Jesus went, he collected the keys of hell and of death. And he went and opened the gates for the prophets of old. That was why it was recorded that the graves opened up and the dead bodies came out. If not, why must grave open? What was the reason of the grave opening up after the death of Christ? He has opened the gate and, and the Bible says people saw them. They said, oh, that's Moses. He, that's Abraham. My, we read it in our book. That is Abraham. People saw them. They were moving in the holy city. Praise God. Am I talking to somebody? People saw them. They were, they were moving around the holy city. And all of a sudden, Jesus took that same key. And they all came out. And I was like, who can even lead them? How did they even come out like this? It now drew my attention to the song David sang. He said, all that men should praise the Lord. All that men should praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men, to the children of men, he has broken the gate of brass and have cut all iron asunder. It was David that was trying to communicate it. What happened? And then they came out. All of them came out. And the Bible calls them the cloud of witnesses. Cloud of witnesses. Cloud of wit They were hovering in the cloud. Hovering in the cloud. And you remember, when Adam and his wife was cast out, who cast them out? Is it God? No. God was looking, God wanted them to stay. God. <laughs> God wanted Adam and Eve to remain in the garden even after the eating of the tree in the midst of the garden. But principality showed up! They were called the cherubims. They had flaming sword. That is to tell you they are armed. It was not ordinary sword, but flaming sword. God said, don't come and tell me that I have broken the edge. You better chase them out now. Lest they eat the tree of life and never die. Adam stretched his hand to collect the fruit and the sword came. They pursued Adam on a race. You think Adam just threw out of that garden? He was pursued. He ran with his wife out of the garden. And the gate was locked up. The gate was shut down. God has looked at the whole situation that this is too terrible. Man, my, the man I created in my own image should not be suffering outside. What am I going to do? He said, okay man, listen to me. If you pay your tithe, I will open the windows for you. You see why tithe is important? Those people that are, we don't take it in, because this is not a church, so we don't bother talking about tithe. It's not our, but to those of them that take tithe, they are not wrong. <laughs> We would not bother ourselves here. We don't even take offering and tithe. <laughs> but from what I discovered, they are not wrong. Even though the major thing is not for the windows to be open, but for the door to be open. So if there are windows, there are doors. So Adam was outside. So Adam gave birth to Cain and Abel. They were all outside. They couldn't return back to that garden. It was after Jesus came and freed these guys from the place. He now ascended. Old Moses, Abraham, all of them tried to enter the gate. When Thomas came, when Jesus came to show himself to Thomas, it was not working. How did I know? Because the Bible said Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. He was the one they were waiting for. So they were just hanging in the cloud, hanging in the cloud, hanging in the cloud. And then Jesus arrived at that gate. The Bible calls it the everlasting doors. You see it? And he screamed. He, was, he has waited for this day. He screamed, lift up your head, all ye gates. And be you lifted up, you everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. The principality listened. This is so strange. Since Adam left, nobody has ever passed through this gate. 
They are not sure who the person was. That's why they now ask the question. They now ask the question, who is that king of glory? <laughs> so for the first time, Jesus had to introduce himself. And you see, these same people that teach you the Bible, when he got to this point, they said, it was when Jesus was going to hell. That was when he said, lift up your head so he gates. You see why he said, I'm a small boy, I can't correct them. They said he was going to hell. The gate of hell cannot be called everlasting doors. And Jesus didn't go to hell as a king of glory. He went to hell as a prisoner, the same way his fathers were in hell. So it was in hell he defeated principalities and powers and became the head of all principalities. And when he became the head of all principalities, they chose their secretary, they chose their treasurer, they chose all of them. He cannot be the head of an organization that is not legal. I thought you were binding them. That's why I said the church binding principality is a waste of time. That's why I said the angle I'm seeing, they are not seen from that angle. So the principality is asking, who is that king of glory knocking at the door? He has to introduce himself. He said the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. I could hear the sound of that ancient gate. And the gate was open. And then Jesus entered as the king of glory. Only to go and discover someone is sitting on his chair. Okay, this is where the end though. They say he has ascended. Easter Sunday. <laughs> Uh, me, I'm telling you what happened beyond the Easter. Beyond it. So we need to give this message very well so that our viewers all over the world will understand what we are saying. He entered to discover the old serpent that was not chased out in Genesis sitting down there. But the question is, Adam and his wife sinned and they were chased out by principalities. What did they now do to the serpent? They left the serpent to take over the garden. Nobody chased the serpent out. And no man of God, no church member has ever asked, why was the serpent not cast out? The serpent remained there and grew wings as a dragon. So anybody that ever entered that territory, he is controlling it. He controls everywhere. That's what I'm telling. Anytime I pray, I say, God, now you be God, now you be devil. <laughs> I don't know what they want me to believe. Because I've seen a lot through the scriptures. I don't think they will make me to start fighting a certain enemy that doesn't exist. God wants me to fight the devil. Is that what God wants you to do? Please, let's talk. It's a class. God wants us to go and fight the devil for him. He wants us to <laughs> go and bind it for him. God! I cannot do that one. Do it by yourself. You know why I cannot do it? Because they showed me how powerful they fought him. Me, ordinary flesh. We're going to say war against principalities and powers. That fought Jesus even from the beginning of... What do they talk now? I know they want verse, I beg. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know whether I'm making sense. I want to... Please, uh, go to that Revelation chapter 12 again. Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7. I don't know. I don't know. You see somebody who's... You demon, you principality, I command you, go, go, go. And they are wasting their time and deceiving people. Please, let's look at the screen again. Because most of if we don't uh, give it like this over and over, it can't sink in your spirit. Revelation 12 and verse 7. Now, this was after Jesus has entered heaven. No, I told you when he went to heaven, you can't see somebody. This was when he has gone to. Because this is Revelation chapter 12. Revelation gives us a final picture of our future. So, this is Revelation 12 and verse 7. And it says, and there was war in heaven. The first question is, what is war going to do in heaven after Jesus has gone to heaven? Is he going to fight another war there? Pause. He drew my attention back. When he says something, he says, the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints. When did the ancient of days came? It was when Jesus had entered heaven. Now, this is a drama when the ancient of days came. They waited because they, they, he was overpowering the believers. He says it made war with the saints. Do you know what he was talking about? He didn't make war with sinners, so. If he made war with sinners, we say, well, it's because of their sin. He made war with righteous people and win them. And nobody asked questions. He won them severally. They waited patiently until the ancient of days came. And judgment was given. And whenever judgment is given, that means there is a process, a court process. And you cannot deal with any court process without the presence of witnesses. If not, why? what is the significance of Jesus removing witnesses from his body? 
Why? Why is he witnesses? The Bible said the spirit came out of his body. The water came out of his body and the blood came out. And the Bible said he that saw it took record of it. They took record of it. Look at it. And there was one in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who is this dragon? He was the serpent before. That deceived Adam and Eve. This is him. He's now a dragon. He's no longer a serpent. Because the Bible tells us that. Look at that. And the, and the dragon fought. Look at it. it says, the angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought. And his angels. That means the dragon now has already gathered angels for himself. So beyond the fall of Adam and the coming of Jesus, the dragon has gathered many followers. Next verse. And prevailed not. That means the dragon could not prevail over the fight. Neither was their place found anymore. Where? Yeah. So it means that dragon is in heaven. Okay. Where will I sit and talk? Because I want to explain it well. Do you understand what I'm saying? It means the dragon is in heaven. You want to go to heaven, the dragon was there before you. Is that the one you want to go and fight? Look at it. There was no place found anymore in heaven where he was living. He was living with God. No wonder he was coming for meetings. And for him to be able to enter heaven, he was one of God's sons. So the devil is God's son. It, yes. It's his son. What is he doing in heaven? Is this not the Bible we are reading? It's his son. What is he doing there? How come he had access? How come he had access? Okay, let's go to verse 9. Look at what happened now. Verse 9. And the great... Oh, did you see they call him great? Ordinary, you want to go and bind him. When even the Bible we believe and read calls him great. The great dragon was cast out and he now further introduced that dragon. He calls him that old serpent. Did you see that? That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into where? The earth. And the angels were cast out with him. See now, that old serpent. Now, some theologians will tell me that the Garden of Eden has been located somewhere around Africa near Ethiopia. They say, Listen! The garden of Eden is in heaven. Because wherever that serpent is, that was where Adam and Eve was. Look at it. That old serpent. Did you see that? Called the devil and Satan. We deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels joined him. They were cast out here. Now They left heaven. They didn't see mass to cast them into. <laughs> they didn't see the moon to cast them into. They didn't see the sun to cast them into. I don't know why our God is creating more problems for us. You see why I cannot pastor church? Have you seen it? Why? Because I'm, I think critically. He cast this thing, they fought, you saw, you saw how they fought him. <laughs> and they cast him into this earth for me and you to go and fight everlasting battle. You'll be fasting, fasting, crying. What is this? Look at it. Into the earth. Where you and I live. That's where they cast him to. Praise God. Hmm. All right. After they entered the earth, some of them fell in the river. Some of them fell many places. Am I talking to somebody? It is those one that fell and became Amadi on her. This one came out and became Finimaso. This one came out and became Adum. All of them, anywhere they fall, they take territory, take the authority over the people who live there. And that is what we call customs and traditions. Okay, let's go. And I had what you and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. What is it? What voice is saying? He said, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Pause. He said, now, now is salvation come. That means when Jesus was on earth, there was no salvation in heaven. Look at it now. And strength, meaning when Jesus was on earth, there was no strength in heaven. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. Have you seen he was really talking about Jesus? Then he says, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God, day and night. That's not total than God, than God. Do you understand? He accused them day and night. He wouldn't be accusing them from the outside. He was before God Almighty. And how does he accuse them? He accused them based on the laid down principles and constitution given to us to live by. So when a man commits an offense, he accused. That was how he accused Job. Look at a wealthy Job. Job who said, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was revealed upon my tabernacle, he said, I washed my feet with butter. And the rocks filled me oil like river. As prosperous as Job, he accused him. And Job lost everything in one week. Think about it. God would have said, don't touch it. Don't touch his money. Don't touch anything. 
Rather, I say, don't touch his soul because God is interested in your soul, not that car, not that house. Okay, now. For the accuser of our brethren, accuse them before our God day and night. Next verse. Next verse, verse 11. See how they overcame him. And they overcame him by what? The blood of the Lamb. And what? By the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto death. They love not their life even unto death. They were fighting to regain God's kingdom. All right. Next verse. Now, an announcement was now given in heaven. And what was the announcement? Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Then, after Jesus went to heaven now, what happened to the earth? They cost us. I think they sound preaching only Old Testament. This is New Testament. They cost us. They, they lay a curse on us. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. That is in the verse. Having anger. Because he knew that he had a short time. I'm making a research on how long is a short time of the devil. There's a short time. We are still within the, in the calendar. We are still within, within the short time of the devil. We are still within the short time. And within a short time, you are binding him. Didn't you read it? Jesus went there to go and deal with one. He opened his mouth and said, Have you come to destroy us before our time? Thou Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, For we know you. You are the Holy One of Israel. Don't come here and deceive us. There are a time, there are a time assigned unto us. When that time ends, it's after rapture. It's taking place. So the time will be ended. Then after we have made heaven, the Bible says he will be released for a little season again to go and deceive. Again, no. After we will come out from this one. They will release him for a little season again. That's what the Bible says. Hmm. All right, next verse. Are we still together? And when the dragon saw that he was cast where? Onto the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. He said, wait, oh. it was a woman who gave birth to this Jesus. And then he started dealing with women. That's why I pity for many women. <laughs> Our mother suffered. Mm -hmm. Let's still go further. Next verse. And to the woman, we are giving the wings of a great eagle that she might fly. That is where the anointing comes in. So the anointing was given like a temporary solution. So you can use it to fly. In, and you are not flying into any good place, you are flying into the wilderness. <laughs> Am I making sense? You are flying into the wilderness. You understand? Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of where the serpent. So we have been kept. Now, this is that time, all right? We have been preserved from his face. So sending you to go and fight war with him is nonsense. It's nonsense. Next verse. So, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away in the flood. We'll be wondering when the flood entered the earth after the time of Noah. Because God has already vowed after the flood of Noah, he's not going to use the flood anymore. So any flood you see today in your area was cast out from the mouth of the serpent. If flood came, it was not God. And every time flood comes, one thing will happen. The earth will help the woman. Did you see that? Are you seeing what is happening? This was when it was enacted. Next verse. Next verse. And what helped the woman? The earth... And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up what? The flood. That's why every time flood comes, give it more time, the earth will swallow it. Because the earth, that's why they call it Mother Earth. It always helped mankind. Do you understand? It swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, the big one. Say with me, the big one. Last verse, verse 17. Let's just see verse 17. Hello, verse 17. And the, and the dragon was wrought. The wrought, you see, there means angry. He said that the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with who? The remnant of who? Her seed. Which do what? Uh -huh. And who is it referring to? <laughs> I like your own Bible. Let me just hold it. This is the Bible, right? This is the commandment of God. This is the commandment of God. So the dragon is making war with who? The remnant of the seed of the woman. Which keep this thing? Are you seeing where his legality came from? Which keep this? So whenever you go against this, he fights you the way he fights them in heaven. But the only good thing 
that Jesus did for us is that he didn't allow him to tamper with our soul. Did you see that? So Jesus went ahead of them to protect the soul by his death. But he couldn't achieve it for our flesh. That's why he's not making war with the flesh. And what are those things? Are those things that is important to us? Your cars, your, your children, your wife, your clothing. He makes war with anything physical. But he cannot touch your soul. Because your soul is protected. Did you see that now? That is the beauty of what Jesus did. So when we are thanking Jesus, we should thank him for saving our soul. And then he told you, look, listen, I'm doing. I have no right to help you. You have done what I can do. But all you need to do, you, you will step into that thing I have done by confession. That's why I said, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 